today i'll talk about organization and operations of a blood bank this is part of my series of lectures on blood banking let us first see what is a typical organization chart of a blood bank so if blood bank is associated with a hospital then medical superintendent is the authority and uh, under medical superintendent we have head of department and quality manager if the blood bank is stand alone then uh, we have a director and quality manager is directly under the director under the head of department there are one or more medical officers and under medical officers we have uh, at least four resident doctors which are known as blood transfusion officers and they perform 24 hour blood bank duty in the donor room then under the medical officer uh, there is a nursing staff nursing staff uh, is also directed by the resident doctors on duty and under the resident doctors on duty there is a counselor for counseling of blood donors and there is a housekeeping staff uh, who is under nursing staff then under the medical officer uh, directions there are other staffs which include technical staff for transfusion transmitted infections item stock and inventory technical staff for blood storage and blood stock technical staff for quality control technical staff for component preparation technical staff for in lab and 24 hour duty now let us see what are the what are the operations of blood bank and what is the process flow so uh, blood bank is involved in uh, blood donation activities blood issue activities and uh, it also have uh, uh, advanced red cell serology lab uh, for thalassemia patients especially who need multiple or frequent blood transfusions and uh, apheresis unit so let us see first what is the process flow of blood donation so blood donor is first counseled by a counselor and then uh, abo blood grouping and rs typing is done for the donor then hemoglobin is estimated of the donor then medical examination is done by a blood transfusion officer or resident doctor then uh, blood is donated in bleeding room and sample is kept for transfusion transmitted infections and other testing so testing is done for uh, hiv hbs hcv vdrl malaria in tti lab and report is entered in blood stock register and positive blood bags are collected from quarantine storage and discarded as per sop so uh, the donated blood is uh, then converted into blood components uh, blood components are prepared and stored in quarantine storage then TTI negative blood components are then stored in a release storage as per SOP and blood components are cross-matched with patient sample and released for transfusion. After blood donation, uh, donor is given refreshment and then there is a donor exit from blood bank if donor is comfortable and no adverse donor reactions are reported. Now let us see what is the process flow for blood issue. We receive uh, blood request form and patient sample. We check the sample labeling error. If there is a labeling error, then it is investigated. If it is resolved, then we proceed further. If it is not resolved, then we request for a fresh sample. If there is no labeling error or clerical error, then we do ABO grouping and RS typing of the recipient. Then if there is blood group discrepancy due to any allo or auto antibody then it is investigated in detail in advanced red cell serology section if there is no blood group discrepancy then uh, cross matching is done from the blood stored in a release storage if it is incompatible then we take another blood for cross matching if we have successful cross match and blood is compatible then it is labeled and released now let us see the process flow of advanced red cell serology section of thalassemia patients. Uh, we receive blood request form and patient sample and we check for lab labeling error. 
if no labeling error is there, then ABO grouping is done, RS typing is done, and RH extended phenotype and allo antibody screening is done. If there is no blood group discrepancy because of allo or auto antibody, then we do cross matching using RS extended matched bag. If it is compatible, then the blood is released. This is the process flow for platelet apheresis. So, for an institution when uh, where apheresis is directed to a particular recipient, so we have a prospective donor and we have recipient samples. And the recipient samples and prospective donor sa samples, they are cross-matched. And if it is compatible, then we proceed for apheresis. If it is not compatible, then we ask for some other donor. Now let us see what is the floor plan of a blood bank. According to WHO 2010 document, blood bank has following subsections. Uh, it has a blood collection facility. It has a processing unit. It has an inventory and distribution unit. It has a laboratory. It has a quality management unit. It has an administrative administration unit. So blood collection facility have a reception area a donor waiting area, a donor interview room for donor counseling, examination room for medical examination, donor room for bleeding or collection room. Then we have a donor lounge, a pantry for donor refreshment, a donor treatment room if there is any adverse reaction reported. Then we have a apheresis room. In processing unit, we have a component preparation unit, which is the main unit in processing unit and a quarantine blood product storage. Inventory and distribution, it has a release blood product storage and a communication room, which is very important and very active room in inventory and distribution. In a laboratory, we have a blood group testing laboratory. We have a transfusion transmitted infection testing laboratory. We have a reagent store. We have a NAT testing or nucleic acid testing for transmission transmitted infections. Administration unit, we have a room for a director, we have a room for deputy director, we have general office, we have donor recruitment room, this is another very active room, and we have a store. This is a floor plan I have taken from my own blood bank, uh, which I am looking after. So it has various subsections, and they are arranged in a particular fashion. So we have a waiting room and a reception, uh, in front of each other because uh, donors and patient attendants they interact with at the reception and they may have to wait then we have a flow from a counseling room to examination donor examination room to bleeding room and then donor exit we have a quarantine storage right in the bleeding room where blood is stored before uh, it is tested for transfusion transmitted infections. Then we have a release storage where blood and blood component are stored, which have been tested for transfusion transmitted infections. So uh, this is all for today. Thank you very much.